This video is proudly sponsored by McGraw-Hills Access Engineering. You ever find yourself struggling class and you need just a little bit more help? You need to see worked out solutions. You need to see video solutions. In classes such as statics, solids, thermo, dynamics, material science, then Access Engineering may be for you. So go check out Access Engineering, link in the description below, and get the help that you need today. Now, on with the video. Hey gang, welcome back. We're talking today about trusses. We're talking about the method of joints, okay? Probably one of my most very popular videos on all of YouTube here. And I'm going to show you how to solve truss problems using the method of joints, okay? So we have a little simple truss here. And it says, find the force in each member of the truss and state whether that force is in tension or in compression. So this is the first time that we're going to be asking you, is the member in tension or compression? Remember, a truss is made completely of two force members, and two force members either exist in tension or compression. So step one, we need to identify what are those members, okay? So how many members are in that truss? What do you think? Here's what I think. There's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, this is not one member down here. Every member terminates at every joint, okay? Let's just write them all down. Okay, so we got, we got member AB. We got member BC, okay? We got member uh, AD. And then we got uh, BD. And finally, CD. Okay? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So that's what we're looking for. Okay, so how do we find out what's going on? So what we're talking about now are internal forces, right? These, this eight and this five, are external forces. And those guys are causing some force. If I cut that member in half, whoop, and I looked inside of it, right? There is, there is some forces inside of there that's generated by these guys, and that's what we're finding. That's what AB is, is the force that's inside of member AB, okay? I'm gonna show you how we get it. It's quite easy, okay? Using the method of joints. And I'm gonna, let's write a recipe, okay? So number one, step one, okay? Find global, equilibrium. And that's just a fancy way to find, say, find the reactions at the supports. Okay, so step one, I'm going to look at this thing and I'll say, okay, what's going on? I've got a pin connection at A, okay, so at A, I'm going to have a, um, a two forces, one like this and like this. So an AY and an AX, okay? And let's see, AX, which way does it go? Well, the five goes that way, so the X better go that way, okay? Um, AY, which way does it go? Now, remember, if you don't understand which way it goes, it's okay to guess. I'm, I, I don't know. I'm going to guess that it goes down. I might be wrong, but when I solve for AY, if I get a negative, hey, I was backwards, okay? And then over here at C, there's a CY, right? So I've got a first step, step one, I've got to find AX, AY, and CY. And we do that by looking at, you guessed it, the moment at A, okay? So some of the moments at point A, this being positive, okay, equals zero, what do I have? I'll put my finger at A. I've got five that rotates me clockwise, so that guy's negative, okay? So minus five times how far away? Four, okay? And then I got eight. Oh, he also rotates me negative, minus eight times how far away? Three, okay? And then I got CY, which rotates me, oh, that's counterclockwise, that's positive, so plus CY times how far away? Four. Okay. So let's see what we get here. We got uh, 20 
plus 24 uh, equals 4CY. So what is that, 44? So 44 divided by 4 equals CY, which equals 11. Okay. So CY is 11 kilonewtons going up. What's the total downward force on the system? 8. So what does AY have to do? It does have to go down, doesn't it? And as a matter of fact, it has to go down, right? AY, if you do, and then here it is, I'm going to write it down. Here's what I was doing in my head, right? I was doing the sum of the force in the Y in my head, which is 11 positive going uphill, and then minus 8, okay, and then minus AY. Okay, so move the AY to the other side. AY is equal to 3 kilonewtons, okay? So, um, and of course, the sum of the force in the X tells me that AX has got to be equal to 5, right? So this guy, 5 kilonewtons. This guy, 3 kilonewtons. And this guy, I'm doing him in red, 11 kilonewtons. Okay, we have completed step one. We found global equilibrium. We're good to go. Okay, so step two. Step two. Okay. Select a joint. Okay. You can, we're going to pick a joint to start working on. Okay. However, there's a special note here. Okay. Do not pick a joint with more than two unknowns. Okay? Why two unknowns? Because these, we're going to analyze a particle, right? These are little chapter three problems. Remember the chapter three problems, okay? So let's say we start off at joint A, okay? The next step is step three. Three. Draw FBD of the joint, and then I guess step um, four is solve, whoops, and then if there's a step five, it would be repeat, okay? So, Let's start at joint A. If I start at joint A, if I take my free body diagram cookie cutter and I select joint A, okay, I'm only going to cut through two members that I don't know. That's only two unknowns. So joint A would look like this. There he is. It's got something like this, something like that, one like this, and one like that, right? This guy is five kilonewtons. This guy going downhill, three kilonewtons, okay? Now, this guy up here is, is member AD, okay? And this guy over here is member AB. Well, this one's pretty easy, isn't it? Because for that joint to be in equilibrium, he's not moving, right? So the sum of the forces has to be zero. Then the up stuff has to equal the down stuff. The left stuff has to equal the right stuff, okay? So if that guy is going that way, this one has to go this way. And if that guy's going down, then this one has to go up, okay? And this is pretty easy, right? It tells me that AB has to also be equal to 5 kilonewtons, and AD has to be 3 kilonewtons, okay? So right away, I know something. I know, I know AB is 5 kilonewtons, and I know that uh, AD is 3 kilonewtons. Now, here's the one thing that's different in this chapter. You have to tell me, is this member AD, okay, is that member and, and member AB, are they in tension or compression? So let's talk about that for a second. If I, if you are the member, right, and I come up and I squeeze you, uh, and you're in compression, what are you going to do to me? Uh, I'm going to push back on you, right? This is a free body diagram of the joint. So a compression member always pushes on the joint. A tension member, he's being stretched, and so he's going to pull on the joints, right? So is this force pulling on the joint or pushing on it? 
It's pulling. So forces going away from a joint are always tension, okay? Away, always tension. Okay? It's not a free body, that's not a free body diagram. It looks like, oh, the member's getting squeezed. No, nope, wait, that is not a free body diagram of a member. That's a free body diagram of the joint, right? The joints in, the member's in tension and he's pulling on the joint, okay? So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put a T there and a T there, okay? And that's all you have to do in this chapter is identify, is it in tension or in compression? Is it a T or a C? That's it, okay? Okay, now we've done joint A. So what should we do? Let's look at joint B over here. Okay, now there is one thing that we're gonna have to do real quick, and we kinda need, we kinda need this angle right here. Um, oh, that's easy, isn't it? That's a three, four, five triangle. So that means that this angle right here is 36.87 degrees. Where did you get that? Well, you can use tangent if you want, but it's so common in statics that I just, I just remember it, okay? So here is joint B. I'm gonna draw joint B over here now. Okay, and joint B, what does joint B look like? Well, here's what he looks like. He has a force there, a force there, uh, a force there that's eight kilonewtons, okay? And then it's got this one right here, okay? Do we know any of the directions? Let's just label these. This is AB and this is uh, BC. And this one up here is BD, BD, okay? Look at AB, okay? You know what? There's AB up there, okay? So on this one, AB was pulling. So what's he gonna be doing to this joint over here? Now, if you said going that way, that's not right. Because if one end is going that way and the other end is going that way, what's the beam doing? It's moving, right? If one end goes that way, the other side has to go that way, right? It's a two-force member. So the two ends act in opposite directions. So if the guy is pulling on the joint over here, he's pulling on the joint over there. So this goes like this, wah, wah, right? And we know how big AB is, it's five kilonewtons. Okay, oh, we know this angle right here, 36.87. Is that right? No. No, that angle is not 36.87. Wrong. I should have done I should have done that after all, isn't it? It's 53.13. Okay, that one up there is 36.87. Oh, I'm glad y'all told me about that. I almost messed that up. 53.13 degrees. Okay, that's better. So, BD and BC, do I know which way they go? Well, I got something to the left, I got something going down. If I got something going down, then BD has to go up, doesn't it? It's the, since BC doesn't have an upward component, this one has to go up, just to have equilibrium, right? Downwards, upwards. Okay, now that guy's going to the left, that guy's going to the left, so BC has to go to the right. A lot of tension members in this truss, aren't there? We haven't had a compression member yet, okay? So let's see if we can solve this truss, okay? So this guy has two components, okay? And you can use that angle if you want to, right? Or you could do this. This side's three, that side's four, right? It's a three, four, five triangle. So the X side, this guy right here, would be three-fifths of BD. And this guy over here would be four-fifths of BD. And if you want to use the angle, that's fine. If you let it put that in your calculator and you do the cosine of 53.3, 53.13, guess what you get? 0.6, right? Which is the same as three fifths, okay? That's a little shortcut trick that we've learned. Okay, so here we go. We have two equations we can write. The sum of the forces in the X and the sum of the forces in the Y. That's all we can write, okay? So here we go. In the X, what do we have? We have BC um, minus five, uh, and then minus three-fifths BD. Okay, 
And then in the Y, what do we have in the Y direction? We have going uphill, four-fifths BD. And then in the negative, we got negative eight. Okay, so we move the eight to the other side and we get, uh, what do we get? We get eight divided by 0 0.8, which is 10. So BD equals 10. Okay, that's one of the things that we need. And then we can substitute that back in right there. 0 0.6 times 10 is six, right? So negative five minus six and it's minus 11, move that to the other side. So BC equals 11 kilonewtons. Okay, and which way do we draw them? They're going away from the joint. So BC is in tension, BD is in tension. Okay, so BC, is um, 11 kilonewtons. Uh, what did we say? Tension. And then BD is 10 kilonewtons. Tension, right? Okay, we got one more to go. Let's make us some space and we'll do CD. Okay, we'll put him right here. Okay, the old hand eraser trick. All right, here we go. We can do joint C. Let's just do joint C right there. Okay. So joint C, always when you're working these problems on your test, label what you're doing so if somebody's grading, it's very easy to tell exactly what you're doing there. Okay. And, ooh, there's CY, isn't he? He's 11 kilonewtons, okay. So if that one goes up, this is a CD up here. Right? Then this one has to go down, doesn't it? It's the, it has to. And then this one, that one goes to the right, so this one has to go to the left. And we knew that, right? It goes away from the joint because he went away from the joint on the other side, right? So this is BC, right? He was away from the joint. He was going this way over here, so he's going this way over there, right? It has to be, okay? Okay, and then one thing we need more is this angle whoop, right there which is four, four this way and four that, it's 45 degrees, isn't it? Okay, so from all of this, okay, this guy has two components, one there, one there, right? I need that component, which is the sum of the forces in the Y equals zero equals, what do I have, 11 going uphill, and then what do I go in downhill? CD minus CD times the, sine of 45, okay? And so move the 11 to the other side. Let's see, uh, 11 divided by 0 0.707, which is the sine of 45, 15.56. So CD equals 15.56 kilonewtons, okay? And CD, is he going away from the joint or to the joint? He's going to the joint, so that means that's the only compression member in the whole thing. 15.56 kilonewtons compression, okay? That's all there is to it, gang, all right? You just start at one joint and you just start working your way around the truss. This is not the fastest method in the world, okay? It's not fast at all. And what we found at A, we carried to B. What we found at B, we carried to C. So if you mess something up along the way, you just carry your error and it just gets worse and worse and worse, okay? So there's a lot of places to get messed up. But what did we do here? Right here, when we started off and we did global equilibrium, right there, okay? That's a chapter five problem, okay? Well, some of the forces X, some of the forces Y. This thing right here is a little old chapter three problem, right? This up here, a little old chapter three problem. The one that I erased, a chapter three problem. So we had to do, for one chapter six problem, we had to do a chapter five problem and three chapter three problems, okay? So there you go. That is the method of joints. I hope this helps. Thanks.